Oh, you have decided foolish. to actually come out of retirement from the beer chugging game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Congrats. Well, it's not just, it's not me, it's the chug coming out of the retirement. You gotta remember the chug is its own entity, okay? That thing gets me in a lot of very interesting situations, both inside my stomach and outside in real life. Mm -hmm. But the chug had to be retired, had to be set away, because there's another generation of chuggers that show up to places, endown things in spectacular fashion, and the in energy and environment rises to their feet, and the energy is at a level that is palpable in the Chug had to be retired because there's another generation. And to be honest, I got sick of chugging 25 to 30 beers anytime I went in public where beers were available and people knew that I could chug because said younger generation, who actually isn't the generation of chuggers that they think they are. Now, granted, there are some greats that I cannot keep up with that are younger than me, but there's a lot in the younger generation that have been told by their friends that they're good chuggers. So then they come popping off at me and I'm like, excuse me, you need to relax right there. Oh, you won't do it right now. I mean, I just chugged 15 beers, but I will do it right now because this is a little lesson to you to go take to your friends and when we were doing that tailgate show with barstool oh yeah by the way that show should have survived i mean that energy was it was electric fucking electric i mean it was insane every single time we went out there portnoy put that vision together and yeah. the people that would show up at that thing i mean obviously there were some tech issues we went through an entire show with no sound <laughs> but the energy at those shows was fucking unbelievable and i would be chug i would end each show with a chug against somebody i lost one time i think because we were so hung over i mean we got after it the night before so in a lot fun. of these places but the 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 chug thing became its own game and the people that were picked to chug against me from the schools that we go to, there was a couple that started popping off on Twitter and their friends started like talking shit to me. They started talking shit to me, like very, very mean things. And I'm like, excuse, excuse me. When I beat you, I would also like your fucking dumbass friends to get up here. <laughs> and that was a real thing that happened on a very regular basis. The one time you lost, it was a tall boy and they didn't tell you because it was in a mug. Yeah, so it, for those that don't know, by the way, if you're a chugger, you there's two different strategies. Well, for me, for instance, there's two different strategies for a 12 ounce and then a 16 ounce. That's four ounce. That is a massive difference for how you attack said chug. So they gave me a 16 ounce. I thought it was a 12 ounce because the cup and how it felt. So I went with 12 ounce rules, which by the way, a 12 ounce for me, I can dump the entire thing down my face. It's that it's that 13th ounce that really gets me. <laughs> so you have to adjust accordingly. You have to do a two chugger. You have to do a two gulper, eight ounces into each, you would think. I wasn't told, I lost straight. That guy was a good chugger though. That was a he good was 16 good. ounce chug. Mm -hmm. But I've retired it because there are much better chuggers than I out, out in the world. Mm -hmm. And at 21, 22, 23, I was a much better chugger than I am now, I would assume, because I put it away. But back in the day, man, it used to be awesome. I was talking like, Back in the day, it'd be like 40 beers a night I'd be chugging against people. Jeez. Just because, like, whenever somebody would talk shit to me, I had to answer. Like, I, it wasn't like, uh, oh, I'll get you tomorrow, because then what am I? Then what am I? For, then that person walks away saying, oh, that person didn't want to chug. They tell a story about it. And I'm <laughs> mm -hmm. like, well, that's not going to fucking happen. We got to do this right now. <laughs> and that is potentially why I think I'm going to die young, because those things were happening like two, three times a week at one point. It was it? awesome. Yeah, Like I said, first time I ever traveled with you, really kind of just getting to know you, we're at Gillette Stadium and every single person wanted to chug against you and you never said no. And then the whole barstool tailgate thing, you never said no to anyone. So then it would stack up. Literally, I shit you not, 20 plus beers. So then every time I would go in public where there was beers available, everybody and their mom would be like, uh, I want to chug against you. I can chug better than you. I got friends can chug better than you. And I could, I wasn't mature enough to be like, Oh yeah, probably, man. Okay, have a good one. I was always like, all right, fucking bring the beers over here. You want a shotgun? You want to, <laughs> I just need a cup. Let's go for it. But I had to retire it because there was a younger generation that was better than me, but there's a lot in the younger generation that aren't and pop off and they will run into the younger generation studs that'll bury them someday, I hope. And it feels like Jet Passing is potentially in that group of few people. Now, yep, granted, he'll get it. Jet could be a great chugger though. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, and you got to respect everybody. For instance, I can respect the homeless looking man that was down in Jacksonville whenever we were down there for the Gator Bowl, where he was sitting at the end of the bar and he basically put out a challenge that he'd buy our whole team. There was like 15 of us from WVU there. He was like, I got everybody's beers for the night if any of you can out chug me. And all my friends were like, we got the fucking guy. <laughs> Back on truck against this guy. I'm like, no problem. I'm already a little bit drunk at this point. This old man had a beard sitting at the edge of the, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the bar. He and I both have a chug and we go cheers. And my move was I would always watch how they started, right? So I would watch how they started to see how it was going to go. And by the time I watched him, that shit was already gone. And I, 
I was halfway done. He slammed the thing down. We had to buy his tab, and he walked out. Like, that's a move I'd assume he wow. does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was never more impressed with somebody. In that ride back to the hotel after that, <laughs> boy, that was tough. Oh, oh. The fucking bum who hasn't had nutrients in 30 years <laughs> just put you in your not so fast now, little chug boy or whatever. And it was the first time that I ever lost in a, hey, I'll buy all your drinks if you can out chug, because that was something we used on a very regular occasion. And I didn't puke much either. That got me in trouble October 20th, 2010, because the, uh, the doctor that put me into the substance of abuse policy for 27 months told me that I should have puked. If, you, if this was an anomaly and you didn't normally drink like this, you should have puked at some point and there was no vomit found on you or near you in this entire situation. Oh. And I wanted to be like, well, yeah, I used to chug fucking 50 <laughs> beers a night. What, what do you want from me? I'm not going to do it. And then that would have put me in for even longer probably. But that's my life as a chugger. So is that the first time you met Mitt's dad? Was that at the bar? <laughs> No, 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 that was not Mitt's dad. Oh, it was Foxy. Oh, it, wasn't. it was Foxy's dad. Oh! oh, that's classic. It is interesting though. Chugging is like one of those things where everyone thinks they're the best at it. Like yeah. ping pong, it's like cornhole. Yeah, cornhole, ping pong. Oh, I'm the best. I'm the absolute. So then, whenever I hear that when I'm with Pat, it's awesome. Well, well, every group, by the way, has their yes, has their, their, their fast drinking friend. Yeah. Send the warrior in. But I, I, went, I took a lot of pride in being able to chug beers there. Talk a lot of pride. Very mature stepping away. You know, I mean, you can't be thirty-five beers deep before one p.m. You know, three, four times a week. There's a Jordan. Just move, can't really. do that as an adult. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do that as an adult. But there is kids out there that I'm happy they're carrying on the throne. That they are doing that currently, and that's very nice of them. Someone's got it. And I'm happy I got away from that. By the way, I would have been dead by now. I mean, for sure, would have been dead by now. You know sure. what that was back in the day? Like the chugging of each person in their group. It was it was like back in the day when they would call Achilles to fight the greatest fighter of yeah. their team. Yeah. Please. So they didn't have to go to war and whoever fought one on one won. Boagrius! What was that? He got it wrong. I was waiting for someone to give the Boagrius call because after Boagrius comes. Achilles! Achilles! Yeah, I've never seen a movie. Achilles! <laughs> Mullet's best. Will, in that situation though, you know. Pass! Yes. Oh, oh, that was, you, yeah. And then you run out That's with a, a beer. <laughs> yeah. What are we drinking? Yeah. Shit! And then pass and runs out. <laughs> I'm happy that I don't do it anymore, though. I am very excited. Those days were very hard the next day because there's sugar and beers and oh, things of that nature. Yeah. So that hangover started to get pretty mighty there for a while. It was a Jordan move. Jordan wanted to walk away from the game. So did you. You didn't want to get dragged <laughs> off the court. It was a lot of fun to watch, though. It was. those. Virginia Tech. That's the one that came to my mind. Virginia Tech was insane. Insane. And they do something where they throw beer cans, full beer cans at people. <sighs> And if you, if you catch it, you can get hit right in the face by oh, a flat beer. Like, it's dude. just standard, normal operation. Like, it's yeah, the worst. You, you might get hit in the face by a beer can. But if you catch it, you you're, you're immediately have to chug it. Yeah. So it's like their thing in their tailgate is just from one tailgate, maybe to three tailgates over, there'll be a beer toss. Oh. And it's like fire in a hole. Everybody puts their eyes up and then grabs it. And as soon as you grab it, you have to take it to the head. It is insane. It was a great time. It was so, That show should have survived. It was so much fun. It was a great time. But walking through there, there was... I think before we did the show, on the way over there, I think there was no less than 15 beer chug questions. For sure. So I do that. Then I do the show. Okay, so now I'm on the show, and those beers are hitting me at different times obviously <laughs> during the show. And then you, you're you told that these beers are potentially just going to get hucked at you, and we're in the front of the entire thing on a stage. Yeah. So beers are flying like past us at one point. And there was this one dude on a school bus, standing on top of a school bus oh, that yeah. they had on the back of the crowd. And I had sunglasses on because I was probably – I mean, those things were probably tough to open at the time. So I had sunglasses on. But this guy on top of this bus was thinking about throwing a beer. Like, I saw him up there thinking about throwing a beer. And I think JSB was either in the middle of something or, or Dave was saying something. And I was looking at this person. And I had this entire thing mapped out of my head. He's going to throw a beer at this thing. I am going to snag that thing. And I even knew where my keys were. I was going to pull the keys out. And I was going straight to the <laughs> thing. And I was going straight to it. And I was sitting there. And I was just staring at the guy. And I was trying to give him like a like a throw, throw no, jet thing. Do it. But if I do too much of this, I thought there would be another, what, 40 <laughs> beers? Yeah. Potentially gone. Virginia Tech was outrageously awesome I and knew. we were out till four that night we had to wake up early because the scooter gang thing which was the coolest thing ever too Virg virginia tech does not get enough credit for being a blast but it is out there in the middle of it. i mean it is oh. out there now it is it Blackbird. is out 
We went into a, a saloon the night before. Yeah. We were in a saloon, double door saloon. Oh. Copperhead Road. Yeah, that was when we learned about Copperhead Road. When Copperhead motherfucking road hits in one of those smaller towns and there's a saloon, it's like ants to su- uh, sugar. Where they are just fl- fl- people that up? weren't even into saloon heard Copperhead <laughs> Road start and came sprinting into double doors and it was awesome. That show should have survived. That was a good show. So much fun. It was yeah. a good show. Good idea. So sorry to interrupt. If you're a man watching this, you deserve to have long, great <laughs> And you can do that now with our friends at Roman. Right now, you go to GetRoman.com. You get $10 off and free two-day shipping on Roman Swipes, which are guaranteed to make you have longer, more fulfilling <laughs> every time you get in the sack. Now, let's get back to the fornicate in action. Well, really, thank Love God it didn't, or else you would have probably had mm-hmm. to have 800 beers every week. Yeah, but I think for that show, it would have been worth it, just because of the environment yeah. was so lit. Now, granted, I've gone on to see Joey Chestnut chug 13 beers <laughs> in, what is it, a minute 15 or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. 13 pints of beer in a minute, whatever it was, minute 20, 70 seconds, whatever, minute 12, whatever it was. He did that in front of a 2,800-seat theater on New Year's Eve one night, and uh, I have no idea how he did it. We thought he, we would assume he'd just puke it all up nope. afterwards. He did not. He actually uh, tag team doubled down on that with yeah. some vodka. He drank an entire bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. Joey so. Chestnut, not only American hero for what he does with hot dogs, you should see what he does with beer. It is yeah. next level. He'd never done it before either. Never. I, I, he's, he was in town, and we had uh, known him through a couple of different things. Connor Daly knows him, IndyCar, who finished in six this last oh, uh, weekend. Good for Connor Daly finally getting a full-time ride and ending up six. But he was the connect there for Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut was in Indianapolis for New Year's for something. He was either doing a uh, shrimp eating contest or a wing eating contest I or something like that. Uh, it was a shrimp eating contest. And I was having my New Year's Eve show. I was having my show at night with New Year's Eve party. We need to get back to doing that, by the way, because yeah, there's awesome. just, there's really nothing like it. We just I put on like a uh, a variety show basically mm-hmm. with a bunch of different talent. We had a magician there. Carl Magic. There was a uh, oh, Carl. yeah, he was cool. great. He was great. Then there was a uh, one of the best guitar players I've ever seen came out and played. There was some comedy. There was I mean it was and then we had a party afterwards. It was a cool New Year's Eve, expensive ticket, but it was a cool New Year's Eve. And Joey Chestnut, I was like, uh, hey, any way you can stop by my show and maybe do something? He was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to or whatever. I'll come to the show and we'll figure it out. Then like a couple hours before, he sends me a text. He's like, uh, yeah, I'll do something. What do you got going on or whatever? And we pit- I pitched the idea. I was like, maybe just chug a bunch of beers or something like that. Maybe chug like five beers or something like that. He comes back. He's like, yeah, let's do 13. I was like, oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> we'll do 13 beers. And I was like, have you ever done this before? He's like, no, but it'll be okay. And I was like, okay, you said it. And that son of a bitch lined up 13 do we have the video he uh, lined up 13 pints of beer right across a, a mobile like shelving thing and he just first one down just like he takes down the hot dogs by the way it was like uh you see it go through his entire body <laughs> second one down third one down he gets a half a dozen down and it's like what the f- this guy's gonna go and we're only 30 seconds into this thing and then when he got to 10 11 12 and 13 he started like doing his like hot dog dance a oh, little yeah. oh my god i gotta open up some more space he finishes it place goes ape shit yeah. by the way because everybody's drinking throughout the entire night we end the show that way we walk off the stage that's when the conversation happens like Joe, are you gonna are you gonna puke that up? He's like, no, I never puke anything up. I, I, it's kind of against the rules and things of that nature. And we're like, well, are you gonna eat some food or whatever? He's like, uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe yeah, Jimmy John's like four hours. Yeah, ago. a little bit. And we're like, what is gonna happen? He's like, well, I need a clear stomach because uh, to get that much in there. So then he grabbed the vodka, something somebody gave it to him. He hung out with us the rest of the night. That had to be a rough morning for old Joey Chestnut. He had to get on a flight to California the next morning to go do an appearance. That had to be a rough night. But I never loved American hero Joey Chestnut more than in that moment when he took down 13 of them things. I did find someone's angle of it. Of Joey Chestnut? Yeah, it's not Mm -hmm. ours. It's from someone tweeted it, but it shows it. unbelievable. Go ahead. Put that. Look. Look at this. By the way, New Year's Eve party, pretty electric. It was awesome. Oh, no. Oh, no flip, flip. Oh, no. Everybody's got to turn their fucking head side. To... Shout out $20 Damn. Chef Sean Latham. Getting the chant going. Uncle Todd, Todd McComas counting aloud. Look at this son of a bitch, dude. See, that? that's what I cannot do. Everybody's just looking at this thing sideways here. There was only one rule, which was don't walk in front of it. 
because we're going to try to get a gif of this entire thing. $20 chef Sean Latham was so pumped up, he's just started sprinting laps around him. <laughs> and those are 16 ounces. 16. Yeah. P- these are pints. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Look at this thing. It's a live look at Mitt's Saturday night. <laughs> look at Sean. Oh, Jack, it's Sean. I mean, it was it was hard not to be jacked up about this though. <laughs> Last one. Can he do it? The man who ate seven thousand hot dogs in his life, thirteen pints of beer in seventy-two seconds. That Sideways sir, look wow. there. Two days later, nine or eighteen pounds of shrimp. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Louise. warrior. <laughs> 